All right, Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone who rule well, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, Shalom, to the men of the Lord that are prophesying, preaching and teaching on the highways and byways in sincerity and in truth, Shalom, Barakatham, uh, defining and addressing toxic masculinity. Now, I wanted to say uh, just a couple words on this topic of a post that I had came across earlier, um, and uh, Lord willing, it's edifying, but this is, uh, this is to address the topic of, of manhood, you know? Um, and basically the, the wiles of the devil, man. You know, the scriptures say that uh, we're not gonna be deceived by the devices of Esau, Edom, and this is one of those uh, devices, man, you know, this, this guy is very, very crafty in how he words things because he, he's basically gotten the, the entirety of society to, to, uh, to take on the plight of the woman as, as if she's not been lifted up above everyone else. And, uh, ultimately what that does is it destroys you, man. If you watch, uh, that, that show Game of Thrones, there's a particular king who's a very immature young man, just wild and wicked. What happens when he was what he when he was placed in power? All right. King Joffrey, they call him. <laughs> and this nigga was a was a menace, man. OK. And what happened? The kingdom basically fell into ruin. Now, this is what happens when you put people who are not ready for leadership, who are not built to deal with leadership. In power, they basically destruction happens, all right, and it's no different than making society what they call gynocentric, which is basically not the it's basically woman worship, man, you know. And uh, this isn't anything new. This goes back to the to the Romans, to the Greeks, you know, worshiping Diana and Athena, um, and on all their various different avatars, they you know that they've anthropomorphized over the years, you know, or even going back to the uh, Egyptian pantheon of Isis, uh, Ishtar. You know, in, in Babylonian times. So so what you have now is a new spin, a new version on it. But how, how do they do it? They do it first by getting weak men to bring down other men. <laughs> you see, now it, it's talking about this topic of uh, toxic masculinity. And who do they have here? Lo and behold, that's the front image, man. A dreadhead nigga, man. All right. A very... Uh, you know, I'll just say a uh, soft <laughs> looking individual here. You know, you got to be careful the words you used on here. But this is what they want, man. Ultimately, they want to destroy men entirely. But they want they, they, they want to, to destroy the uh, the manhood of the Israelites, man, which is the so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos and so-called Native Americans. And. You know, I'll have to say, man, he, he's done a good job of it. And one of the main things he's done, how he's done that is to take the man out of the household and set up Keisha, man. And she has done a very great job of just destroying everything, raising feminine men. All right. And, and, and masculinizing women, just completely flipping everything on his head, man. But let's read toxic masculinity, sometimes called harmful masculinity. It's often a, used as a catch all term for the behaviors of men and masculine folks. Okay, so you see what you see this here, right? This is basically a demonization of being a man. It says in reality, though, there's plenty of room for someone to be masculine without being toxic or engaging in behaviors that's dangerous or hurtful. So what does that phrase actually mean? Now, we know he's going to call good light, sorry, good, good evil and evil good light and light darkness, man. That's, the, that's a precept the brother brought out recently. Uh. Let me see good evil light dark let me see if this will pull it up I believe it's in psalms uh, let's see I have 
есть... Lock you to find that preset, man. Um, yeah, that, it was Isaiah 5 and 20. So, lock you. Yeah, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. All right. So, darkness and light both have their purposes. You know, it's a duality. But when you flip them on themselves and you, and you, move them in their opposite places it causes chaos destruction all right it says that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter basically he wants to just flip everything upside down on his head man you know that's that's what this whole thing is about man all right let me go back so what does that actually phrase actually mean generally toxic masculinity is, is an adherence to the limiting and potentially dangerous societal standards set for men and masculine identifying people you see the language that's being used here, man? <laughs> All right, this is on a site called Healthline. All right? And, and these guys are your rulers. These are your, your wise men of today. All right? Has no idea what's, what's going on. But this, this, is, this is how they get Jake first, man, because they know that so-called black people are the most masculine. So what does he have to do? Because he, he's, he's afraid. What does he have to do? He has to destroy that idea. He has to destroy that concept. He has to demonize it. He has to bring it down. And what does he do before he he, he goes to war with something? He tries to, 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 uh, to slander it and bring it down. He tries to convince other people that, that, that something's wrong with you. You see? Man, now these are the things that made me uh, think about it. These are what they call the common traits. Traits of toxic masculinity include themes of mental and physical toughness. <laughs> so, so basically, you can't be tough, man. You can't be mentally strong. They, they don't want you to be. They, they basically want you to be women, man. Honestly, they don't want any such thing as a man. They want to destroy all men and the concept of them, basically. You see, because look at what they're labeling it on Healthline. All right. Now, some of these, I believe these articles are, are written by by doctors or at least opinions of them, you know, or there are some of these articles are based on studies of, of, of doctors, I guess I should say. But look at the terms that they're coming up with, man. Aggression, stoicism or not displaying emotion. So if you don't act like a whiny. Bitch, excuse my French. All right. If you don't wild out, if you if you don't if you if you keep too calm and too collected in in, in, in a crisis, you're a problem. You're toxic. Heterosexism or discrimination against people who aren't. <laughs> self sufficiency. So they, they they literally don't even want you to be self sufficient, man. Now you see how this whole thing ties together between the World Economic Forum and what they're doing. You're gonna own nothing and like it, and that they they basically want androgyny, man. I'm going to look up that term. Androgyny. I spelled it wrong, Salakia. The quality of state of being neither specifically feminine or masculine. All right? They want to be no difference. When the scriptures say the complete opposite, there must be a difference between men and women. Man. All right? It says the combination of feminine and masculine characteristics. The combination of feminine and, and masculine characteristics. So they want to merge everything together. They want to mix it up. What's another word for mix up? It's 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 confusion. That's what the word Babylon means. It means confusion. It means to mix together. <laughs> and and this is exactly what you have, man. Look, Janelle Monet. Look, look. Wow, man, you got David Bowie and, and Jaden Smith here. Look, you got kids, 
Oh boy, I don't even get started on that. This is uh, Matthew 12 and 29. It says, uh, yeah, I just started, I just read 29. It says, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. All right, so now we see what's going on here. Jacob is the strong man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll type this before. You see that? <laughs> All right. This is Genesis 25 and 23. And the Lord Jehovah said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. All right. So. He already knows it's written in prophecy who would be the stronger one. So what does he do? Going back to Matthew 12 and 25 again. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? So you see the clues here, right? And spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man. And then he will spoil his house. What happened in the 70s, man? When they started offering these incentives for food stamps and, and section 8 housing. That, that, if, that if Keisha didn't have a man in the house. She bought it. She 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 took the bait. She drank the Kool-Aid. The men got out of the house. And what happened? He dropped at the same time. He started dropping off drugs and guns in the streets. And before you know it, gang culture started. And then when gang culture started, what else did he do? He got he invested into gangster culture and music. Then he invested in music to, 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 to perpetuate that culture. He made it popular. He made it. He made being wicked palatable. And then once it was palatable, he actually convinced people that it tastes good, that this is actually good for you, man. By the time you got to the 2000s, you, you, you basically had people glorifying all types of manner of wickedness, man. Shooting your own brother, selling drugs, committing adultery. All of these things were praised. And, they, and it's even worse now. But notice he targeted the men first through the music. And now it's spread over to the woman. Now, now... After the 2000s, you have twerking culture, man. Starting with Juvenile in 1999. You know, back that ass up, that, that hit. And, and, and for, for the last 20 years, it's been basically the, a culture of, of twerking. Now, how did that happen? How did he get to Eve? How did he get to Keisha first to make a twerking culture that, that, that our men didn't shut that down? Well, he destroyed the men first. You see? But the thing is, is that we we're we're still way too masculine, man. But see, Esau these these things that Esau is describing, it's making his men feminine faster at a faster rate than our men. That's why a lot of Edomite women are starting to like Jake now more, man. Because we we're harder we're harder to feminize. That's why he's got to go through so much effort. He's got to put so much money and invest so much money in, in, in feminizing us. Because we we're just we, we're just too naturally. Too, too naturally masculine, man. He does it through food. He does it through uh, entertainment, ma media. All right? And the biggest way he does it is by making sure you don't have a father in your home, man. He makes sure you get, you get raised by, 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 by only a woman. When you go to school, public school, what, are, what, do, you, what do you get taught at public school? By 95% women are, are in public schools, man. Teaching. You see? Last precept, Jeremiah 31 and 22. How long wilt thou go, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord Jehovah have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. And that's basically what we're seeing right now. All right. And you can't, it, it, you know, the fact that we're even getting censored about particular phrases and things like that shows you the state of society where we're at, man. This place is on its last leg, man. It's basically done. You can't, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't say anything. You got to watch how you say at work. You got to worry about getting canceled, fired, all of these different things for, for a speech that comes out of your mouth, for being who you naturally are, what's in our genes, you see? And they want this image to be the image of our people. 
You see? But I'll, I'll end it there, man. Hopefully this lesson was edifying, man. The uh, water again for you brothers. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahakwadash, Tawah Aba Papa, Shalom.